You know, one of the biggest limiting beliefs of the small business owner is that they're missing something big. And it's that something big that's keeping them away from those levels of success they want to have. And I'm here to tell you categorically that it it is the small, seemingly inconsequential things that make the biggest difference. Welcome back to the Your Rich Life podcast. And today I'm going to talk to you about the three morning habits that you must have, not to just win your day, but to elevate your levels of success so that you can create the business and life that you want. In reality, what we know is that the people that are really achieving at high levels, the world's highest performers, they get that way through some simple habits that they do every single day. And one of the primary ones is how they start their morning. Now, this is more than just about a morning routine. So today, I want to share with you three parts of your morning routine, three essential parts of your morning routine that won't just help you win your day, but they will elevate you to higher levels of success guaranteed. And the best news is they're really simple and you could literally start them today. So number one is you need to leave the phone alone. Now, I'm not just talking about the phone, I'm talking about any tech. Leave tech alone for 60 minutes minimum at the very start of your day. And here's why. If you wake up in that beautiful sort of theta state when, you're, when your mind is like a sponge and it's the most creative part, just, before, just when you wake up and just before you nod off and you immediately check into somebody else's life, what message does that give out to the universe? that somebody else's life is more important than yours, that you're checking in with what other people are doing, and that is how you start your day. Now, when you do that, not only is it a really big representation of who you put first, but second of all, now you risk putting yourself in the state of reaction. You've only got to see something or read something or hear something that shifts you out of that great energetic state and it's really hard to recover from that. You know, if you can start your day within the right energy, you've got a really good chance of maintaining that. But the minute that you shift yourself out of that energy, it's way harder to pull yourself back. When you're not in control of your energy, you can't be in control of your thoughts because your emotions and your thoughts, they're they're kind of in this, they're intertwined. How we think is how we feel, how we feel is how we think. And you've got to learn how to, to generate that. So I want you to think about how it puts you into this reaction mode. And then the, the problem with that as well is that that is like a channel, a radio playing in your mind for the rest of the day. You know what it's like when you get up and you stub your toe on the end of the bed. Like, that thing's going to follow you around. Then you go get your top caught on the door handle. Then you might trip down the last couple of stairs because the energy is following you because you're absorbed in it. So this is more than about, you know, putting the phone down, not, not getting into tech. It's really about the energy that you create from the minute that you open your eyes. So put the phone down. The second thing is, touch the dream. Touch the dream, touch the vision. What I mean by that is that, again, very similar to number one, it's easy because we're wired that way to step straight into work, to get ourselves involved in that to-do list, thinking I can tick all this stuff off now and then I will feel. And when we're in that moment, when we're in the to-doing, we're in the very logical reasoning of the more I get done, the more I achieve, the further I will go. But we're missing the, the creative magic because your reality is created in two ways. Your reality is created through repetitive behaviors. Your reality is also created by the repetition of a dominant frequency. That means that everything you think, the thoughts that you hold dominant in your mind, they create this frequency, an energetic frequency that's unique to you. And that is lining you up with outcomes. So if you're constantly in the to-do, you're missing out on this power pack that is focusing in on your energy. We are told from a very young age, about about five or six, stop daydreaming. Focus on what you're supposed to be doing. It's instilled in us not to do that daydreaming, not to touch the vision. But the vision, the commitment to creating the feeling frequency, not only number one makes the journey more fun, and this is already a hard journey, but number two, it allows you to, uh, to, to, to line up with an outcome that you can't see or guarantee. 
So you'll find yourself making more progress more easily and probably getting outcomes that you couldn't even see in your conscious mind because we just don't have that level of power. So allowing yourself to engage in touching the vision through daydreaming, through journaling, through writing, through doodling. I don't care if you go through Pinterest, whether you look at catalogs, whatever it is that you do, as long as it allows you to jump fully into that feeling state, to bathe in a luxurious bubble bath of feelings and emotions of what it is that you're moving towards. The longer you spend in that frequency, not only does it align you up with those outcomes much more quickly, but like I say, it's a power pack, it's an add-on, a massive add-on to the action. When you add intent, powerful intention and attention to your action, you go further, more quickly and more easily. Now the third and final step is that I want you to act backwards. What does that mean? It's very similar to number two in the fact that it's all about you generating the energy. And I want you to write this bit down. Clarity starts with who you need to be and not what you want to do or what you think you need to do. Clarity starts with who do I need to be? Most people, most small business owners that are in this mindset that when I get to this certain income, when I am doing this, when I achieve this, I will then feel. And the problem is, all the time you're putting those expectations out into the future, oftentimes you can't even achieve it because you're misaligned energetically. So one of the things you have to do is say to yourself, if I already were a six-figure business owner, if I already were the CEO of my own business, if I already were in the best shape of my life, having the best relationship that I've ever had, feeling like I was fully on, you know, in my purpose and living out my mission, if I were... Place yourself into that future vision and ask yourself, what am I doing? How am I acting? What am I feeling? And you start doing those things now. You cannot become a queen if you act like a pawn. You cannot become a successful six or seven figure business owner if you keep acting like somebody who thinks that they're just making ends meet, that they're just adding to the kitty they're just doing their little bit you've got to start thinking from the higher level so you have to go out into the future and let yourself sit in that vision let yourself fit in sit in that emotion and ask yourself how do I be her now regardless of what's going on externally how do I create the internal environment because here's what most people are doing they're looking for recognition they're looking for uh, proof externally that gives them permission to feel a certain way internally. When I look in the mirror and I see my body looking like this, then I'm gonna be happy, then I'm gonna be satisfied. When I look in my bank account and I see this, then I'm gonna feel successful. When I'm working with this number of clients, then I'm gonna feel like I've made it. But do you see the problem here? The problem is that you're always gonna move those parameters. And what you're looking for in any one of your goals is an emotion, you're looking to feel something. But as a human being, you get to feel that thing at will. You get to generate the energy. It's a key high performance skill, learning how to generate the energy regardless of what is going on in your external reality. That is the third thing that's so important. Think backwards. So don't wait to feel something. Don't wait to, to feel like you're successful. You act like that person now. And let's face it, none of those things are hard. All you're being asked to do is not touch tech for 60 minutes in the morning. You're being asked to prioritize yourself and not somebody else's life or some inconsequential crap that's happening on social media. You're being asked to daydream. How hard is that? How hard is it to commit to spending 30 minutes in several places throughout the day to, to dream, to vision, to pretend? Did you not used to play play dress up when you was a kid? Dressing up, pretend, pretending to be somebody else? That's what we're doing now and we're doing it like we would do it when we were five. We believe in it. And that third thing is thinking from the end backwards. So playing dress up, playing imagination, stepping into her, because eventually you will rewire your mind. You will create your superstar success identity. You'll understand that your next level of success is in your next level of identity that you get to choose. Breaking those paradigms, that conditioning that's been given to you. So three essential morning habits that won't just help you to win your day, but that will set you up for a whole new level of success, guaranteed. And you know what to do. If you love this, please subscribe and share, and I'll see you again for the next episode.